So for the focus of this video is we're going to finish up installing and running the create AI project that we set up all the programs for you to be able to run it on the previous video. Again, if you've never set up anything like this before, you're not familiar with VS Code, you're not familiar with things you need to install in order to run these projects on your computer, I do recommend watching a previous video. I'm going to leave the link in the description. It's just going to help you get everything set up. Very easy, very straightforward. And again, if it seems a little bit scary, I think it's going to help you. So the main things we're going to cover is we're going to do the git clone command. That's how we're going to download the code. We're going to install all the things that the project needs. These are called dependencies in order to get the code to run. We're going to run the project. I'm going to show you some of the errors that you can get if you don't get your API keys. And then I'm going to show you how you can get the API keys in order to finally get your project running. We are going to be mainly working on VS Code. I'm going to show you some commands that you're going to type in here in order to get your project to work properly. I'll try to cover a little bit on why we're using these commands, what they mean, so you can start getting familiar with them. I'm assuming that a lot of this computer science stuff, a lot of these programming things are somewhat new to you. So I never want to talk in a way that seems like I'm being too technical or like I'm overcomplicating things. I'll show you how to do the thing you need to do and I'll give you a brief explanation on it just so you can start building a foundation as you work on this project or build your own projects later on. Some of the feedback that I've gotten from my school community is that members on there mentioned to me that it's better to have a project that's easy to follow and where all the steps are clear than one that's a little bit shorter. But if it leaves room for people to get lost, then that's not very efficient. Even on the courses that I post on here in my school community, I try to make it as easy to follow as possible. I try to give you just enough information for you to hop on, finish your project, start making it on your own. That way you can really start expanding your skills. So yeah, pretty much anything I teach, I'm going to make it as easy as possible for you to understand. So let's go ahead and start with our git clone command. Our git clone command is what we're going to use in order to download the code from the repository. The repository, that's just a fancy name for the page where the code lives or the page where the code is being stored. And remember, we're going to use this crew I examples repository. Whenever you see any code on GitHub, you usually go to this green button that says code. And you're going to click this link right here. Now that we have the link, which is really just the page where the code lives, we're going to go back to VS Code. And in here is we're going to use the git clone command. First, you do want to make sure that git is installed. Again, we did that in the previous video. But you can double check by just doing git dash dash version. You see here that we have git version 2.4. So that's perfectly fine. So now we're going to do the command git clone. And then we're going to paste the link we copied. That's just control V on your keyboard. So what this command is doing, it's just telling it to clone or copy or download a copy of the files that are on that page to your computer. Then you just press enter. You see it load up. It's a very quick process. You see here it's already at 100%. And if your terminal starts getting messy out here, you can always do the clear command, press enter, and you'll clean it right up just like that. Now, if you want to make sure that your files did download, you can use the ls command that stands for list. And you can see here, you get a list of the files that are within that folder where you're at. As you can see right here, we're in the test environment folder. And that folder has the crew AI examples, which is what we downloaded. If we look at the page back here again for crew AI, AI examples is the name of the repository. And that's what we have in here. Another way you can check is you could do PWD. That just means present working directory, as in it's kind of like the address of the folder where you're in. And this would just give you a little bit more reference in terms of where your crew AI files are stored. So if we expand on the left in here, we can see we have all the files that got downloaded. For this particular tutorial, we're doing the prep for meeting example. So before we do anything else, we want to make sure that our terminal is inside of that folder. And for that, we're going to use the CD command that just stands for change directory. We're going to move into the crew AI examples folder. So we're going to do CD crew press the tab and here it completes it. And then again, we're gonna start typing prep, then press tab one more time and it completes the whole file name for you and just press enter. You can see right here that we're in the prep for meeting folder. So that just means that right now your terminal is working inside of that folder. You can double check again with PWD, that's present working directory. And you can see the location where you're at, which is the prep for a meeting folder. And then we're gonna clear this up real quick. So now if you open your folder right here for prep for a meeting, you can see that there's a couple of files that are pretty much what's going to get that project to run. The main important one right now is this one right here called requirements.txt. So this requirements.txt folder is kind of saying that these are the things that this project needs in order to be able to run. So the way we're going to install these dependencies is we're going to use this command that I noted right here. It's going to be pip install dash r requirements.txt. So let's type that up real quick. That's pip install dash r 
requirements.txt, enter. And again, all this command is gonna do is it's gonna go and install basically the files needed in order to be able to use these libraries. And libraries is just a fancy way of saying that it's code that other people wrote that is either open source or just available to the public. Great, now we see here that I've finished up, so let's go ahead and press clear. And now that we did that, let's go ahead with our next step which is going to give us an error, but we're going to try running the command. Now that we've basically downloaded the repository with the git clone command, we've installed all the dependencies that the project needs in order to run. So now we're going to try running the app. Again, the command is python main.py because main.py is the file that you have right here that starts up the program. Then we press enter. So obviously we get an error here, so it's not working. Now, this is the part where I don't want you to freak out. I know you're not familiar with Python and I don't want you to get discouraged or feel overwhelmed by this. What you're gonna do now, because you have the power of ChatGPT, LLMs, whichever one you use, I don't care if it's Claude or whatever, you're gonna take a screenshot of this right here. You don't even have to copy paste it. Then you're gonna open a new window of ChatGPT and we're not gonna ask it for the code to fix it, but rather we wanna know what the error is, what the root cause is, and what are the steps in order to fix it. I think one of the mistakes that people make when they're trying to code with AI, they automatically just want a code response in order to fix it so that they can copy and paste it, which to some extent, it can give you that, but keep in mind that chatbots don't actually run the code that it's giving to you. It's more like a very educated guess because there are language models there. They can obviously make very good assumptions about what the code is, but if it doesn't have all the information it needs for your project, you're just gonna be going in circles, asking it again and again for a different answer. And as you can see here, my prompt is, what is the root cause of this error? What went wrong? What is the principle behind how I can fix it? Give me the steps from a beginner's perspective. Nowhere am I asking about code because it's going to be able to see that with the screenshot, which I already put right here. And then I'm just going to nicely ask it. That's why I put please at the end. Okay, so we see here that the root cause is we don't have our package resources set up. And here gives us a little bit more information about how we can fix it. It says the principle here is ensuring that your Python environment has all the necessary packages installed correctly. So what that tells me is that we're pretty much missing something in order to be able to use all the tools that we need for our application. And here we have step by step how to fix it. Step one, activate your virtual environment. We've already activated our virtual environment, so we don't have to do that. Step two, install setup tools. And here it gives us the command pip install dash dash upgrade setup tools. I don't remember doing that, so I'll go ahead and put that in the guide as well. So let's go ahead and start with this command, python install setup tools. Here we have setup tools successfully installed. So now let's go ahead and try python main.py again. All right, so here we see that our program started up. That's the first line from the main.py file. If you look at it here, when it starts up, you see it has a print statement. It just means that this is the first written text that's going to show us, which is welcome to the meeting crew. And we see that right here. So now it's asking us for emails for participants. For this one, you can just put participant names. So we can put Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. Where's the context of the meeting? They want to discuss AI technology. What is the goal of the meeting? We could just put developing a cool sci-fi ai fill enter so now we're going to get another error and keep in mind whenever you get errors like this the main thing you have to look at is the last line and maybe even the first line of your error. you don't really have to worry that much about everything in between because if one thing went wrong within your project then it's just going to make a whole list of other things going wrong and that's why you get such a long list of errors but in order to fix it you want to get to the root cause fix that and then try again and just so you get in the habit of asking ChatGPT, because i know because i know that with each new project that you make you're going to get different sets of errors as you get more skill again we're going to copy and paste this and ask it one more time so for our response, we get the following for the principle behind the fix, or rather for the root cause, we get this issue arises because the script requires access to OpenAI API, which in turn requires an API key for authentication. And that was actually the next step we we're going to do. I was going to show you how you can get your API keys in order for your crew to be able to run. And this super easy step, all you have to do is go to platform.openai.com and ask you to sign up or log in. Once logged in, you're going to click profile right here on the left. And then here you're going to see a tab that says API keys. From here you're going to be able to generate a new API key by clicking create new secret key. Here you can just call it whatever you want and then click create secret key. Now you're going to get that key. Make sure you put it somewhere safe. Don't share it over the internet. Don't share it over Discord. Don't share it with anybody, period, because this is how OpenAI is basically going to see how you're using the account. And also that's where they're going to decide how much to bill you. Once you copy your key, you actually go to this file that's called .env.example. 
You're going to click it and there's a space here where you're going to copy and paste your API key. So make sure you highlight this, delete it, and you're going to paste your API key for OpenAI right here. Now, there's also one more key we need to get, which is the EXA API key. EXA is going to be a tool that your crew uses in order to search the web. And the way you're going to get access to this is you're actually going to go to exa, that's exa.ai. Once you sign in, make an account with them, you're going to go to API dashboard up here in the far right. Once you click in into the dashboard, you're going to go ahead and go to this tab right here that says API keys. And that's where you'll be able to generate keys similar to how we did with the OpenAI account. Again, you're going to copy that, save it somewhere safe, and you're going to paste it into this spot. Once you've added your OpenAI API key up here, as well as your exa API key down here, we're actually going to rename this file. We're going to take away the example. So just right click, then go to rename. We're just going to call it .env. .env just stands for environment. And this is a reference to what are called environment variables, which means variables are going to be used throughout your application. So after you change the name of this file, we're going to go ahead and try again. We're going to try Python main dot pi here we're asked the same thing about the participants so let's just put something like bill gates and steve jobs again context of the meeting want to discuss cool ai movie what is the objective of this meeting I have a solid idea of what the next box office hit for an ai movie will be and we can see here that our query AI project is running. What do you can tell from this screen text? Again, it's able to make the calls to OpenAI using your API key. And also it's able to search the web using Access Search. You can see here that it's looking up articles based on those two people we gave the names of. And in the logs here, you can see where the agents are having the conversation regarding the subject topics that we gave it. And you can see here at the end where it did a pretty good job at researching both people. We have a short summary of what each of these individuals did. We have some trends and challenges regarding the topic we gave it as far as making a movie that revolves around AI. And here we have a pretty solid itinerary for what would be the talking points and questions that would and should be answered during a meeting like this. Now, the real win here isn't necessarily what you're going to do with this crew itself, but rather now you have a working CRAI project, which again, you were able to get the code from the CRAI repository on their website. And if you wanted to change how this worked, the main thing you would have to change is you would go into the agents.py file. You could read through what's the agent role name, the goal, the backstory, and in changing these descriptions right here that you see in orange is where you would be able to change the behavior of these agents. As you can see, we have the research agent, and here we have the definitions for them. After that, we have the industry analysis agent. Again, they each have the role, their goal, and their backstory for descriptions. And the same pattern goes for the meeting strategy agent and the summary and briefing agent. So just like you don't need to know how to code in order to write prompts for ChatGPT, you also don't need to know how to code in order to change these descriptions right here. The other part that you would want to edit, and again, this is going to be where you playing around with this project, you experimenting it, you're going to be able to see the most results and you're going to be able to learn the most out of crew AI is going to be here in the tasks.py file. Because remember with crew AI, each crew that runs is made up of multiple tasks. And for those tasks that you have, they're going to have agents assigned to them. But just as well, each task needs its own description. As you can see here for the research task, the description of this task is conduct comprehensive search on each individual and the companies involved in the upcoming meeting. And there's a few more details on here. And below for the industry analysis task, you also have a very specific description for that, as well as the expected output. And the same pattern continues for meeting strategy task, as well as the summary and briefing task. I'm not going to go too much into the code because I think Python syntax is something we could talk about for hours and hours. And some of the most common questions I get in my school community are most so related to environment setup and the problems that come with installing projects like this. And I think once people are able to get the project running on their own, they can pretty much play with it, break it, and you know try all sorts of different things in order to learn faster. But usually during the live calls, which we do have on multiple times a week, one of the most common things that comes up in those calls is questions about maybe errors that are happening during the setup or just problems with installations. If you guys have any questions, you have any problems, or you have any suggestions, I'd definitely love for you to book a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me. I'm going to leave a link to my calendar in the description. Here you can pick a date and a time where we can have a free 30-minute video call. Or if you have questions about your project or you're trying to figure out a way how you can 
basically speed up your learning with these AI technologies, I'll be more than happy to help you out. But other than that, congratulations, you've officially installed and ran your first career AI project. And now it's up to you to basically create whatever you want with AI agents. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.